Well, ladies and germs, we have how many Sultan Pashas? We have got, uh... I thought 20-some, right? Close to? We have got a lot of Sultan Pashas. Okay, that's a good answer. A uh, lot of them. And so uh, today we're going to investigate one. It's a freak day in the weather. Um, it's the middle of February, not even the middle, the early February, and it's almost 70 outside. Yep. So we're going to review something that smells like what outside should smell like, which is spring and beautiful and happy and happy. Well, I have to let you all in on a little secret. Uh -oh. There's no such Sultan Pasha that is not lovely and happy <laughs> and wonderful and joyous. Well, that's fair. Okay. So. So today. Today, we are starting to jump down the rabbit hole of reviewing the rest of the Sultan Smashies. We've been letting you guys down. There's a gorillion more, and we haven't even talked about them. Nope. And so today we're talking about um, one of the very best from the house, and that's saying something because that I have not really encountered one that... Isn't the best. Yeah, isn't the best. <laughs> so it's not... It's, it's just... It's one of the perfumes from the house that is not... Um, Super heavy. That's fair. It is definitely more of a lighter uh, one. And yet, it is probably one of the one of the fragrances from the house that I think is. It's probably also really accessible for people who aren't super into attar right. oils. Um, it's not very oudy, and that it's, makes a huge difference. I yep, think. Yeah, there's no oud in this guy. The only thing I would say that's super consistent with what um, Sultan Pasha puts out a lot. This has got uh, a bunch of ambergris in it, mm -hmm. which is a very familiar trait of our uh, good liege. There's uh, tons of ambergris. It's also got um, tons of different flowers in it, and it's got um, just very potent amounts of, of different flowers here. Uh, today we're talking about Thebes. Um, which One. Have, yes. Not two. There are multiple Thebes. The grade, the grading for these two um, is just that there are higher quality ingredients making up Thebes one, as far as I recall. So we're talking about Thebes Uno. Which is uh. this little guy right here. Oh, there we go. Thebes one by Sultan Pasha. So again, you guys are, I'm sure, familiar. That's the bottle it's got the wax seal the wax seal you could tell I don't know if on the other ones that we've shown he changed already to this wax seal but there are a few variances in our bottles um, from different seals um, so what is Thebes so Thebes is um, kind of like ensemble is a uh, like reinterpretation um, this guy is also somewhat of a reinterpretation of uh, Guerlain's uh, long discontinued jetty, which was said to be, at least as far as I could tell, one of the, the weirdest Guerlains you could smell. And uh, as far as also I'm aware, you can still to this day go to um, the uh, headquarters. In Paris. In Paris. Paris. And you can, uh, like take a guided tour of all of their mm -hmm. dead fragrances, the ones that cease to exist. And as far as I'm aware, uh, Jetty's one of the ones that you get to smell. Oh, that's cool. But. Do we know what Jetty smells like? Nothing. I've never smelled it. So you know what? We're just led to believe it's supposed to smell like Jetty. We're we led to know. believe. A bunch of people who have smelt it, um, both in the um, Salt and Pasha group on Facebook, as well as um, just various comments I've seen around have said that they smell very similar. Um, I am guessing, uh, just as was the case with uh, Am Somble, that the Sultan Pasha is superior. And that's also because, again, I mean, a lot of the ingredients here, not saying that Guerlain has skimped out on ingredients. Guerlain fans, you can, you can hold your horses. Just that, uh, as far, again, as far as I... I can tell um, in the amount of time that I have spent smelling perfume and, and working with ingredients, creating my own perfume, um, Sultan Pasha is the master as far as I'm concerned. So that's all you're going to get out of me. That's my subjective opinion. As far as I can tell, it relates truthfully to the objective opinion. <laughs> <laughs> so. And on that note, 
pun intended, let's talk about the notes. Let's talk about the notes. Yeah. So, um, I've got the little sample here. We've got many of these samples. This is, I think, the last one that I've got that has uh, any semblance of juice left in it. That's all I've got left of my little sample, so then I'll have to tap into the great and glorious wonder uh, tapped away here for me. Yep. So, what does it smell like? Um, so, somewhat also familiar to Sultan Pasha's fragrances is that this guy is mm. kind of um, a paradox. Okay. Like a lot, of, to me, a lot of Sultan Pasha fragrances, you put them on, and throughout the day, you are just you're just baffled consistently. Um, like this guy, for example, you wear it. It smells dry, it smells bitter, it smells green, but then... It also smells very caramely and wet and... And fresh. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it smells ancient and it smells brand new. The, the paradox of Sultan Pasha is real. It's very real. <laughs> and uh, this Coming guy's... Coming soon to a theater near you. <laughs> <laughs> Our documentary. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, this guy's amazing, though. Absolutely amazing. I think this was one of the first ones when we, we got our big, like, sample pack of, like, 20-plus, almost 30 samples. I think this one was, like, right away your, one of your favorites, like, home run hitters yeah. that you put on, like, the first wave of ones that we had to buy. And I think rightly so. It smells really amazing. I wish, I wish there was a way to tell you kind of what this smells like, but to me, the best way to describe, at least, like, the sample, not necessarily, like, right now, this very second, think of a very old library that's been taken over by a jungle. That's a cool, yeah. That's, like, you know, that's kind of what, to me, this smells like, I honestly, think of, like, something you find in a Tomb Raider video, or, <laughs> like, movie, or video game, or whatever, just something really ancient, it's got badass shit inside, that tells you about some hidden treasure, but it's been, like, overthrown by a jungle, and that is what this this little doodad smells like. Yeah, it's, um, it is really interesting. It's so primarily like the two huge notes that are, that are intertangling throughout this guy's vetiver and iris. But it is really interesting. I mean, it does have animalics in the base. Again, it's got ambergris in the, in the base. Mm -hmm. And there's also like, um, Some musk and yeah, there's other musk, fun things. There's amber in the base. But it, it also, like I said, as far as florals go, in the in the mids, this guy's got a lot of rose and a lot of jasmine. It's also got rose in the in the top notes, I mm -hmm. think, which Parisian. hang out with um, with some bergamot up there. The Persian and the uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, lily of the valley is hanging out up there at the top too. Uh, mu muget muget, however you pronounce that word. This is right now, ladies and gentlemen. You're you're seeing the air. Of an individual who does all of his studying with no friends by himself <laughs> on the internet. So no one can tell him how to say things properly. Anywho's yeah. uh um So this is yeah, I think this is really great. With it being such a paradox as we come into spring, this is gonna be super versatile. I also think really great for fall too, because you get best of both worlds, which is what the weather is kind of like outside. You get some days where it's super cold and some days where it's super warm and dry and fresh because you still got dead leaves but you're sprouting plants and I don't know yeah I, yeah I mean you know what's odd though in your description what's of odd? it is pretty much exactly how I described it the for my first time through yeah I just said basically like imagine there's a giant ancient overrun temple in okay. the middle of like a forest yeah there you go and like the temple part to me is probably what the books are to you it's like you go in and you keep like going down different avenues and there's just weird things that you keep finding that you're not expecting. Yeah. Like the animalics in here. I mean, I'm telling you while you're wearing it, you are going to throughout the day multiple times be like, what am I smelling? That's delicious. <laughs> that's absolutely amazing. And, and that's how you know you got a good fragrance. You're smelling it again. Yeah. And I'm, um, I mean, it's the case with all the Sultan Pashas, but it's especially the case here that it is just incredibly complex and Yet, like, you don't need to be so heavily invested in fragrance to find this guy just so, so beautiful. Like, mm -hmm. if, if I slapped this on and walked into a barber shop, you know, the other, the other gentle folk occupying the seats in the, in the barber shop are not going to be like, oh, something smells crazy in here. Yeah. It's just going to be like, wow, god dang. Again, I think it goes back to my comment I said earlier that this is really accessible for, for people who aren't 
into which are oils or mm -hmm. um, aren't in the oud because a lot of Pasha is very oud heavy and not it can be hit or miss for a lot of people and this could be a good way to a good test entry, the waters. Like, yeah. yeah. And with both like the vetiver and the iris, the interesting thing there too is it's playing up both like masculine and feminine. Yeah, I would say this is very unisex. Qualities, yeah. yeah. And so I think like no matter who you are, where you, whenever you're wearing this, it's just going to be, mm -hmm. people are just going to be fawning over you. Yeah, I don't think there's a, a scenario I wouldn't wear this to. I think I would wear this equally to a wedding as I would a funeral. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know, date to work. It's all really great. I think it's definitely all around really good. And that's not to say that it's like, that it's muted or that it falls flat in any of those scenarios. If she's going to the funeral, she's getting asked out at the funeral <laughs> because like somebody's going to be like, at the very least, I need to spend some more time to figure out what the hell that is because I, I want it. I just meant the like... No, I know exactly okay. what you meant. But yeah. man, it's so good. It is. It's super good. Um, it's, it seriously brings out like the characteristics of each individual note in here that I love. And there are a lot of notes in here that you love, so that's awesome. Yeah, there's literally nothing I dislike in there. And it's the, true. the cool thing is, like, you can smell them all individually. You can smell them all at play. It's so cool. Like, if you're smelling it and someone's like, and you're playing like a game halfway across the room, you're blindfolded, and someone's like, Bergamot! You're autom automatically like, whoa, yeah, I smell that. Yeah. I get that. And Jasmine! There it is. So, um, yeah, I mean, as far as fragrances go, this is definitely a solid nine plus for me. It's really good. Which is saying something. I mean, I really like it. Yeah, um, she she does not she doesn't really give out tens at all. No, I'm really picky. And Thebes Thebes obviously to me is a is a ten. Yeah, yeah a solid for sure. ten. I mean, if I could go higher, I would. Yeah. Whatever number's highest that's possible, that's me. Yeah. Um. So yeah, this is I think definitely. If you are looking to get into Sultan Pasha Atars, um, looking for something that's multifaceted and multi-purpose, this is super awesome. Um, I think we mentioned in a previous video, Sultan Pasha now has a website. Okay, so for a mill, um, which doesn't seem like a lot, but Atar oil is a little goes a long way. You're looking at about um, 88 euro. So depending on where you're located, do conversion factors as necessary. Um, which, you know, it's not necessarily something that I would say is super cheap and go ahead and blind buy, um, but it is something, you know, if you are looking to spend a little bit more money on something that's going to be all around just super awesome, this might, this little doodad might be worth it. <laughs> little doodad. Little doodad. Yeah, this little guy is just going to enhance your life. That's all I'll say. Like... Like if you're if you are looking for a perfume or a fragrance to wear and like you're like contemplating Blue Day Chanel, you're like, oh it's all ground grape flag fragrance, people seem to like it or whatever, it's not overly crazy and it's just gonna make me smell good. W don't waste your money. Buy this instead, please, dear God. <laughs> and it, like in addition to that, I swear to you, it's going to just it enhances your life. Like you wear this around, whatever you're doing is now instantly better. Because you're smelling this shit, and it's amazing. I'm telling you, it's amazing. Yeah. Um. So as far as who would wear this? Yeah, who would wear? That's this? the next little bit, and I already have my answer. Hit me with it. So in the movie Jumanji, <laughs> the original. Yeah. Tell me about it. When the hunter comes out, or the poacher, or whatever he is, him. He would smell like this. He would smell like this. Oh yeah, because he's been like in this old ass board game for forever. But yeah, like. He's, he's now alive. He's alive and filled with vigor and just keeps on trucking vigor. and just keeps on going. <laughs> I don't know. I just, like, when I when I smell this in a weird way, I definitely think colonial. But it doesn't smell old. It just smells like it's got history and it's distinguished. Yeah. And so, I don't know. I kind of went with uh, the character from Jumanji. Yeah. Likewise, I mean, similar to, to me, I was going to say Tom Bombadil. From, Haven't you used him before? Yeah, maybe. I might have. Okay. But here's the point, guys. The point is... In the in the Lord of the Rings books by J.R.R. Tolkien, um, Tom Bombadil is the embodiment, basically, of, like, a ancient yet still alive figure 
In the in the ex, if you're exclusively looking at the Lord of the Rings trilogy, he's basically God within the series, and he's like just a forest dwelling, um, super deep yet super light yet super kooky, paradoxical character. It's this, I'm telling you, and also the best character in the Lord of the Rings series, like the trilogy. I'm just saying again. Also, Tom Bombadil, you know, J.R. Tolkien, the father of of British mythos. Sultan Pasha is based out of the UK, so it makes sense. It Another becomes, connection. It all it all comes full circle, and that's how the circle. Illuminati's involved. Oh. Our little uh, review of this really awesome fragrance. Yep. Anything else you want to include? Uh, I don't know. Seriously, guys. Sell, sell anything you have that's in like a spring or summer rotation to get this shit. I did, and I would never regret that. This is amazing. Top of the line. Yeah. Well, thanks for tuning in. Uh, it's probably been a year since our last video, and it'll probably be a year till next video. But that's not true. We're we're heading down the road of Sultan Pasha. We're gonna we're gonna review these guys once and for all. So we're doing it. Things we, are happening. We disappeared. Things have been crazy for us. We're, the, this, we're not getting into this discussion, Billy. Go to your room. But secondarily, we're reviewing them now. They're coming out. Yep. Stay tuned.